Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's last segment in the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast. I hope you guys have enjoyed the show thus far, but we are going to be looking at a wide receiver in a very pivotal year for himself, much like Nakua, except that this year is a contract year for him. Now, we on this show have discussed kind of wide receiver two profiles, but this wide receiver two does have the potential to be a wide receiver one. He's in a very crowded wide receiver room. Some might say he's the best in football. And that player is, of course, T. Higgins. When I think about solid, above-average wide receiver twos, T. Higgins is the standard. And it's not just because of the profile of the wide receiver room he's in. It's because of his prolific play. I think he definitely offers so much versatility to this Bengals offense. And in a year where a lot of attention is going to be placed on his play in terms of whether or not the team is going to pay him premium money, I think it's going to be a very interesting player profile to look into. So without further ado, let's jump right into T. Higgins. In his career, he's only accumulated 515.2 fantasy points. So that's right around where you would expect a wide receiver to to average in terms of total fantasy points, and he has had a shorter career. His best season was 2022 at 146.9 fantasy points that year. He only played 12 games last year, but he did have a very solid season, even though he was limited to 12 games, 15.6 yards per reception, 14 receptions of 20-plus yards, and he had four games with 20-plus fantasy point scores. So as you can see, he is someone who has the potential to be a wide receiver one on any given weekend. And he definitely has kind of wide receiver one-like status because he did receive 37% of the air yard shares. And fantasy odds are projecting to have a above-average wide receiver two season. He's going to have one. They project he's going to have 1,009 yards, eight touchdowns, and 144.2 fantasy points. So, in a pivotal year, I think that T. Higgins is going to really present himself as one of those guys who's like going to be a solid wide receiver too. I don't think there's much worry surrounding him outside of his contract in terms of his status. But Let's talk about the contract because it certainly could play a role. It could be a burden on him as he plays out the season. As we all know, he was signed to a one-year contract, but it was more of a franchise tag. And next year, he will be an unrestricted free agent. And so, he's really playing for more than just, you know, contracts money. I think he's playing for pride. And I think that should the Bengals decide to move on from him I really think that in terms of production he might wane however I think he's going to be very motivated because I think he appreciates what this wide receiver room is and he likes being in this wide receiver room I don't necessarily think he sees himself as a wide receiver one he definitely thinks he earns the money deserves to earn the money of a wide receiver one but right now I think he understands his place in this team and looking at his stats from last season you can definitely see that he could be a wide receiver one anywhere that he wants to go and so by really seeing what he's going to do this season I think is what's going to determine his fantasy projections for years to come. I think that next year might be a clean slate for T. Higgins in terms of fantasy. Whatever happens, happens. If he's good, he's good. If he's bad, he's bad. And so on and so forth. And I feel like the contract situation isn't necessarily something that is going to truly matter as the year goes on to him because the Bengals, as always, are mainly looking to build towards Super Bowl contention. 
they're not necessarily worried about their contract business. As a team who is looking to be a contender, they just want to get to that point and then worry about anything business-wise later on. And so I truly think that it, that does benefit T. Higgins as there's no kind of chatter surrounding the contract. And for now, he's franchise tagged the team. He's still linked to the team. And he won't have to worry about it until the end of the season. However, I also think that what's truly hindering him is the fact that in this offense, where you have two dynamic receivers and a solid wide receiver three in Tyler Boyd, I think that the differentiation between what constitutes a wide receiver one and a wide receiver two is why the whole contract situation and what T. Higgins could be is so muddy. There's really not much semblance outside of maybe name and even production to kind of differentiate between what Jamar Chase brings to the table and T. Higgins brings to the table. I think that Based off of pure status alone, Jamar Chase has elevated himself to the wide receiver one role. And it's also because him and Joe Burrow play together in college. And so they had that connection. But T. Higgins, over the past couple of years, has suddenly risen and proved that he also is someone who you can't ignore in this team. And kind of this blurred sense of... Well, I'm wide receiver one. No, I'm wide receiver one. Assumes the mantle. And so, I'm really concerned with how T. Higgins will respond as the season goes on should Joe Burrow go back to feeding Jamar Chase more often. Because I think T. Higgins knows what's at stake. It's not just the Bengals who are watching, it's every organization in football. There are definitely going to be some teams out there who potentially would want him. And so he wants to put his best foot forward. But it all comes down to Joe Burrow being incorporated back into this offense after injury himself. Understanding that, hey, T. Higgins can be someone who I play with for the rest of my career. Or he could be someone I play with never again. I have the choice to make that as well because obviously I know I have Jamar Chase. He's always going to be my number one receiver. He's always going to be someone who I entrust. But I want to keep this core together. I like what we have. Or you can say, okay, maybe I'm just going to feed Jamar and hope we get to the Super Bowl and what happens with T happens with T. But it's very risky to kind of get into the logistics of how that's going to break out because in terms of fantasy t higgins right now i can tell you is a guy who i would take in the fifth to sixth round as a wide receiver too he is going to get you about 12 to 15 points a game he's going to be a solid fantasy prospect but it could come at the expense of you know, the Bengals as a team, because I think for now, the Bengals know what they have in Burrow and Chase and were willing to invest more money in them, but they didn't know about T. Higgins. And so, should T. Higgins have a fantastic year, they may kind of try to push aside any rumors of uh, him leaving. And so it could create a kind of rift and tension there, and who knows? Even if T. Higgins has a fantastic season, he could leave. But right now, with so many scenarios that could devolve from the situation, I think that you can approach T. Higgins in whatever way you want to. I would say be very cautious about taking him before his value, 
But as of right now, I think that T. Higgins is definitely going to be an interesting commodity to look into. But that should just about do it for today's edition of the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast. Thank you guys yet again for tuning in. I have been Chris Shepard. Please like, follow, and subscribe to today's show and the network as a whole. Consider leaving a tip or donation at the link gsmc.cloud. Thank you guys yet again for tuning in. We'll be back tomorrow for our Wednesday show. Happy Hump Day tomorrow to all those who celebrate getting over the hump of the week. And we will be back better than ever. Thank you guys again for tuning in.